please make sure that you do watch until the end of the video because we have exciting news for you. I was really excited, man, about what happened actually during the weekend because it was really eye-opening in terms of the people that are actually coming to our events and how the content actually came together. Because now, if you're thinking about it, right, we all have the credit now. Now that people start are starting to actually have the credit, they are now able to actually invest in property. But now, in them investing in property, how do they invest in property? Are they actually investing in the right property? And this weekend, we actually spoke about the interest rates. We spoke about the back office of how to actually invest in the right properties. Basically, what we do is that we take off the mask when it comes to property investing. So let's remove the bricks, the cement, and look at the numbers themselves when it comes to property investing. Ultimately, how does that feed off to your ultimate goal? So now, what would you say was the highlight from our guest speakers? I mean, this is just to give you a little bit of a form. <laughs> it goes without saying that we do select quality guests because when it comes to them in terms of their field so what happened this time around is that we called an accountant and also a banker mm. so we're rather looking at the finances that are involved when it comes to property investing and how does that ultimately affect your growth or your start because it's quite interesting in terms of how you start right now will ultimately feed off to how you grow and the returns that you're getting. So we can't be looking at property in isolation. We need to understand all these fields, how they have an influence towards you and your journey. So one thing that I would say is that you can never, I repeat, you can never ever invest in property alone. You literally need a team. And it was evident this week. Of course. So now there's something that um, Lebu, who is a banker, actually spoke about that really touched me, right? He said that when you're investing in property, you need to invest with a purpose. I mean, I'll tell you what it meant for me and then you will actually give us what your perspective was. So what that basically meant for me is that if I'm going to be investing in a property, this needs to go back to what is my blueprint to investing in property? So if I'm going to be investing in property right now, mm. I need to start thinking about that. What are my goals for investing in property? And where do I actually see myself within property investing? Yeah. So if my goal is to make 10,000 on a monthly basis in passive income, meaning from my rentals. I need to start looking at the strategy that I'm implementing. I need to look at the types of property that I'm actually implementing. Because now if you're looking at it from a perspective that I'm going to be getting properties that are actually giving me 500 on a monthly basis, this basically means I'm going to need 20 properties that will get me to, to my goal of 10,000 on a monthly basis. Yeah. So investing with a purpose basically means that you need to understand where you are and where you're going. That will actually tell you what type of properties are should you be buying or what strategy should you be implementing you look at developments you look at short-term rentals you look at distressed properties there's so many opportunities out there however now it's very important to find yourself in a specific strategy intentionally mm. not by default that somebody said you know what if you are buying these properties they're going to appreciate over the next 10 years only to find out that that is not feeding into my specific okay. goal. So what Tabo said is that accounting is not our core business. So this basically means that if I'm actually a property investor, my core business is finding properties, mm. getting them below market value, and then putting in a team that will actually help me. So now looking at accounting, accounting is not my strength. I need to have Tavo that will actually ask me or assist me to actually make sure that I am actually competent in terms of my business. Okay, what I really like about Tavo's presentation is the way he explained tax. So what's happening in terms of tax is that a lot of us are not aware when it comes to tax, how does SARS look at me or how does the tax man look at me? So some people will be thinking that, you know what, they're getting away in terms of operating their business underground. Yes, that was the term that was used on, during the event <laughs> that they want to operate underground and how will that ultimately affect them? I mean, if I'm not compliant and I'm not disclosing that this is how much I'm earning, mm. ultimately this will catch up to me. Of course. And I think that we are so focused on running away from tax so much that we're not even understanding how much 
should I be getting in order to be paying tax? Mm. Because you find out that you're still under the threshold, so you shouldn't be stressing about paying tax. However, you should be focusing on compliance. So through you running underground, your business ends up underground. Of course. So now, no, there's an element that... that <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's an element that I want us to look at, right? Yeah. Based on what you just said right now, in terms of running your business underground. Yeah. I think most of the time we are so... Um, observant in terms of how much are we actually paying our banks that we forget that our banks are the ones that will actually help us to actually scale our business. So let's put this into context. Let's say you are actually picking up 5,000 from a property. And now with this 500 that you're picking up from this particular property, so of course this basically means that you are saving from a bank charge perspective. You are saving from a SARS perspective. However, in terms of scaling your business, how much are you saving or how much are you losing there? Because now if you're looking at someone that's actually putting that 5,000 in the bank, they are able to actually justify that I'm getting 5,000 on a monthly basis and how much loan can you actually give me based on this 5,000 that I'm getting on a monthly basis? So whereas when someone is actually getting that 5,000, putting it under their mattress, they can't actually apply for that credit, right? Can you please touch on that? That why is it that sometimes, why do you think that sometimes people save on the front end, but at the back end, they're actually losing money. I think that we really need to understand the term of paying school fees and why do we pay school fees. The reason why you go to a school is because ultimately you do want to acquire a specific skill and then get the benefits that come with that specific skill. So school fees in this term, with regards to us paying credit, the more I'm paying in terms of bank charges, I'm actually paying a facility that will be able to assist me grow my portfolio. Mm. So ultimately, if I'm saving at the cost of growing, depends. I remember I remember I had a situation like that, right? Whereas I had a, a, a card, I won't speak at which level it was, right? But I had, I had recently upgraded ah, I remember my card. that one. I, I had recently that upgraded my card and now once i have actually upgraded my card this means that i had a credit facility i had an overdraft and i had a credit card yeah. with x amount yeah. of uh money in that credit card so when i looked at the charges it was sitting at around x amount of money right let's put it let's put a number i think and you say that because you're confusing the bank access. charges the bank charges were five thousand i'm yeah. just putting it as an example okay the bank charges were five thousand i was like five thousand was too much man let me degrade this credit this card that i'm actually paying right and then i moved from five thousand to four thousand right which made sense on the front end however yeah. my overdraft facilities were actually taken away from me and my credit line actually went down so now this and your credit question, score yeah, yeah and also my credit score went yeah. down so now the thing is if you are saying that you want to save in terms of the monthly charges that you're actually being charged how much are you actually losing from a credit perspective? Because with my credit that I have right now, I know that I can use this credit to do a whole lot of things in a property if that's what I want to do. So now if I was to actually remove that credit away, it will actually put me at, at a back foot. Lewis got interesting stories, man. There's also another one about him. I thought you were also going to take that one. So what happened is that I remember we're still students and then... I got my first card. So I'm happy in terms of, okay, I'm paying X amount in terms of my charges. And I'm, you know, it's business as usual. I want to grow. I'm looking at my clear score. I'm making sure that it's growing. And then it came to a point where I'm like, Levo, come on, man. It's time for you to actually jump ship from student achiever to your normal card. The guy didn't want. So I'm like, but man, do you understand that once you get a gold card, you actually get to grow your credit facility. But he was not having it. So ultimately you look at you might be saying that I'm enjoying my student achiever in terms of not paying X amount from bank charges. But now the question is, at what cost? So that's what we were speaking about. We were literally speaking about credit and also ultimately how to grow your credit so that when it comes to affordability, you will be charged great interest rates. Trust me, when it comes to interest rates and you're not taking care of a credit, you can literally be charged almost double of somebody who is taking care of their interest rate so you do not want to find yourself in that case and i won't say be a level 
he's a good guy now he's a good girl but you don't want to be that person who's holding on to saving so much at the expense of your so now on the 4th of june we will actually be hosting our next event so make sure that you do make your way to mid rent i'm not going to say where in mid rent is it however it will be in mid rent make sure that you actually purchase your ticket today Man, it's unfortunate that this time around we're actually looking at going to KZN. However, because of the flood situation, is it's quite tough. So we just want to put that back a bit. As soon as things get back to normal, we really want to pursue because people have been asking us, when are you guys coming through, man? So that is the case. We are going to Midrand and you best be sure that you do book your seat because we have got experts coming through to speak about property investing. We did mention that every event is different from the others. So if you did come through last year this year it's totally different game if you came through to the previous one it's a totally different game so best make sure that you do buy your ticket in the link below we will actually be on private property speaking about how do you actually get your returns to be at their maximum amount i'm quite excited about that so see you today and tomorrow then on the 4th of june see you again no invest like a pro cheers cheers cheers